keep forgetting to zoom in. <laughs> Zooming in. All right. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm Lee. Uh, I'm going to go over a big topic today. I don't know that I can even cover it uh, as good as it should be covered. But I'm going to try. So, uh, first thing I want to do is point people over here. This is uh, Mick at Grace and Truth, a good brother. Uh, he had me on his Sabbath Zoom the other day, and I agree with him on most things, the real important things. Um, not everything, nobody agrees on everything, but, uh, you can go over here and check this video out, and the rest, he's, he's got good stuff, uh, good brother, um, and I guess while I'm at it, I go over here to, let's see, Not coming up. I see. Well, it is Brother Rob, it's Patience of the Saints. Not sure why it's not coming up, but he's got a YouTube channel as well. You can just search up uh, Patience of the Saints. Uh, let's see here. up here now yeah, I've got it on here somewhere well I guess I should have pulled it beforehand uh, oh yeah I bet that I bet that'll pull it up <coughs> see if this is it. No, that's not it. I didn't know there was that many Patients of the Saints YouTube channels. <laughs> uh, say, put, on, put in Rob. Nope, that's not it. Okay, I have to find it and see if I can <laughs> kind of share it next time. All right. Uh, with that being said, let's establish a foundation here for what we're looking at. Because a lot of people can turn this many different ways, like you get into genealogies and all that stuff, and you know, you can forget the real important things, but the other stuff is still important. So, uh, Romans chapter 11, I say then, hath Yahuwah, um, that's the name of God. Uh, it was removed from our scriptures, the ineffable name doctrine, uh, Jewish tradition, um, Christian church tradition as well. Uh, his name was in the Dead Sea Scrolls and was used, and they took it out. Hath Yahuwah cast away his people, Yahuwah forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, so he he tells you, he, he gives his genealogy. Let's see here. I'll turn on do not disturb for a second. I didn't come prepared this morning. <laughs> so, alright, so he gives... His genealogy. So why would uh, why would Paul do this if it wasn't important? 
he, he said he has not cast away the seed of Abraham, who's an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. Yahuwah hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Uh, love these King James translations. What ye not? Know ye not what the scripture saith of Isaiah, how he make intercession to Yahuwah against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what answer, what saith the answer of Yahuwah unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Uh, let's go here. is Isaiah I just read that the other day mm. is it Isaiah First Kings. Okay, it's in there. He's not quoting it for no reason. Even so, then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. It says, by his grace we're saved. Uh, it's by his grace that we even know to keep his commandments. It's not of our own works, it's his works. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. And the Christian church will take this and say, look, see, no work. When they just missed what he was saying about grace. What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, Yahuwah hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? And we can look that up there too. Let's see. Copy that. It's best to go back and see what they're quoting and read that. So Psalm 69, 22, and the Septuagint will be one before. So it'll be Psalm 68. Let's see. 22. Uh, yep, let their table be made, verse 23, let their table be made for a snare and for recompense for a stomach block. So they also gave me gall for my food and made me drink vinegar for my thirst. That's the Messiah. Let their eyes be darkened that they should not see and bow down their neck continually. Pour out thy wrath upon them and let the fury of thine anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be made desolate. Let there be no inhabitant in their tents because they persecuted him whom thou hast smitten. And they have added to the grief my wounds, add, add iniquity to their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness, his law. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and let them not be written with the righteous. And this happened after the Messiah was crucified. Let their habitation be made desolate. So you go back. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Yahuwah forbid, but rather through this, their salvation has come unto the Gentiles. See, Israel fails, so now the Gentiles can be grafted in, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, 
So, yes, it is. It's our riches because they fail. We can be grafted in. And the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Key point there. How much more Israel's fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. What did he just say at the very beginning? He's of the tribe of Benjamin, which are of his, his flesh, the Israelites, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches will be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, Gentile, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. So boast not against Israelite branches, that will say them, the branch. Then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. See, they didn't keep his commandments. They didn't have faith. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if you who have spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Yahuwah on them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. So if you don't do his commandments, you're going to be cut off too. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For Yahuwah is able to graft them in again. And Hebrews chapter 4 tells you uh, those that don't keep the Sabbath are operating in unbelief. No faith. If you don't have faith, you don't keep it. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. See, we're not supposed to be wise in our own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel, the flesh, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So all Israel is going to be saved. I can't get them. There you go. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. For the gifts and the calling of Yahuwah are without repentance. For as you in times past have not believed Yahuwah, yet now have obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For Yahuwah hath concluded, concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of Yahuwah! How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So when we think we've got it all figured out, guess what? We don't. For who hath known the mind of Yahuwah, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Paul, spirit filled. Misunderstood, but man, you know what he's talking about. Ephesians 2, and you hath, you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, that's all of us, from the womb, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So how do you know which spirit, who has which spirit? It tells you. If they tell you the law's done away with you, you don't have to do nothing, guess what? They got that spirit. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But Yahuwah, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Messiah, 
Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Messiah Yahushua. He came in his father's name. He didn't come in Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Messiah Yahushua. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of Yahuwah. Not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yahushua unto good works, which Yahuwah hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You'll see most of the church will teach this, and then they'll skip this verse. There's good works that we're supposed to walk in. Not of works that we should boast, for we are his workmanship, his works, not ours, his. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Messiah, being aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. Oh, look, there's still a commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Look, there's still covenants of promise. Having no hope and without Yahuwah in the world. But now in Messiah Yahushua, you who are sometimes far off, Deuteronomy, are made nigh by the blood of Messiah. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, key point, ordinances, to make, the, you'll see in Hebrews, it tells you the ordinances were the, the, wash, the carnal, uh, well, let me go to it. Here, it tells you what the ordinances, carnal ordinances. <clears throat> the word always speaks better than man. Hebrews nine ten, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. That's what the priesthood, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. See, but Messiah being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not to say that is to say not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his blood his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained Eternal redemption for us. See? For if the blood of bulls and goats, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, he's telling you what's done away with. That's what Paul's talking about here. He abolished the law contained in ordinances, the priestly, all the things they had to do. He did not abolish the moral laws, keeping his Sabbath, keeping his Ten Commandments. And that when he might reconcile both unto Yahuwah in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you who are far off, and to them that were nigh, Deuteronomy. I can find it. Let's see. Let me get it here. Far off. Yep, Deuteronomy. I think it's in a couple of places. Deuteronomy thirty eleven for this commandment which I command command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldst say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is beyond the sea that thou shouldst say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love Yahuwah thy Elohim, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and Yahuwah thy Elohim shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Paul's not stupid. He knows exactly what he's talking about. We're stupid when we don't know what he's talking about. Or ignorant. 
stupid, ignorant. For through him we have both we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but are fellow citizens with the saints of the household of Yahuwah. What is that? It's Israel. What what is his, what's his his fellowship, the commandments, fellow citizens? And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahushua Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in Yahuwah, in whom you are also built together for a habitation of Yahuwah through the Spirit. Now, Gentiles can be grafted in. His kingdom is still, is still Israel. So that being said, the most important thing is belief in Messiah and keeping his commandments. Being grafted in, whether you're fleshly Israel or not. Now, let's go over to, does that mean that fleshly Israel is no longer valid? No, it does not. That's what the church did with their replacement doctrine. They said the church replaced Israel. No, the church did not. The church was supposed to join Israel. So, let's see here. Here's Enoch that was quoted all through the New Testament. And the Old Testament, the first prophet. Jude quotes him, Peter quotes him, Messiah quotes him. Very important book. Uh, you'll see he's got a dream vision here. And you'll see how it's, it's different. Uh, people are considered animals. And if people had Enoch and realized that, they wouldn't say Acts chapter 10 was saying, he said all foods were clean. That wasn't Peter's dream vision. So we got time of judges. He gives the history of creation. So you got Enoch eighty eight. Yeah. Verse sixty eight and the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts. The sheep are his people. The wild beasts are the Gentiles to devour them, and each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book how many each one of them destroyed of them, and each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision I saw that one who wrote, how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day, and carried up and laid down and showed actually the whole book to the Lord of the sheep. Who's the Lord of the sheep? Messiah. Even everything that they had done and all that each one of them had made away with and all that had given had given over to destruction. And the book was read before the Lord of the sheep, and he took the book from his hand and read it and sealed it and laid it down. And forthwith I saw let's see, second period. And we'll go a little bit farther here. Gives Gentiles on the Jews. I saw till the shepherds and eagles and vultures and kites came and they cried to the ravens that they should break the horn of that ram. It's Messiah. And the eagles represent the last kingdom. You'll see in 2nd uh, Ezra, the eagle is the Roman Empire. And they battled and fought with it and it battled with them and cried that its help might come. And I saw till a great sword was given to the sheep and the sheep proceeded against all the beasts. That is... And another part of Enoch, the righteous, are given a sword to execute judgment. That's uh, Jude. The Messiah comes with thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment. A field to slay them and all the beasts, the birds of heaven, fled before their face. I saw that till that man who wrote down the names of the shepherds and carried up the presence of Yeh the Lord of the sheep came and helped it and showed it everything. He had come down for the help of that ram. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep came up unto them in wrath, and all who saw him fled, and they fell before fell into his shadow from before his face. And I saw till a throne was erected in a pleasant land, and the Lord of the sheep set himself thereon, and the other took the sealed books and opened those books before the Lord of the sheep. 
you know, when that when he sits on his throne, that's the Messiah. So we'll go up here. So behold, rams were born by those white sheep. They began to open their eyes to see and to cry to the sheep. Yea, they cried to them, but they did not hearken to what they said to them. But they were exceedingly deaf, and their eyes were very exceedingly blinded. And I saw in a vision how the ravens flew upon those lambs and took one of those lambs and dashed the sheep in pieces and devoured them. And I saw till horns grew up upon those lambs and the ravens cast down their horns. And I saw till there sprouted a great horn on one of those sheep and their eyes were open. The Messiah, great horn. And it looked at them and their eyes were open and it cried to the sheep and the rams saw it and all ran to it. And notwithstanding all this, those eagles, Romans, and vultures and ravens and kites, that's the Gentiles, still kept tearing the sheep and swooping down upon them and devouring them till the she still the sheep remained silent, but the rams lamented and cried out. And those ravens fought and battled with it and sought to lay it low its horn, but they had no power over it. So you got... I think the dogs represent the Philistines. So that doesn't tell us a whole lot, but you can go through and study that, and it gives you the, the history of the world. Uh, you see the sword given to the sheep. That's the judgment. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Sword given... Yeah, it went forth the slam. Yeah, he not ninety three. So let's see here. Ninety three. This gives the history of the world also. So you can use this to go with the the animal dream vision. This is the history of the world. Uh, you'll see Enoch began to recount the books in the first week. He was born in the first, the seventh in the first week, see. And the second week, great wickedness, and there will be the first end, that's the flood. In it a man shall be saved, that's Noah. A law will be made for the sinners in Noah's days. After that, in the third week at its close, the law didn't come with uh, Moses. <clears throat> After that third week, a man shall be elected as a plan of righteous judgment. His posterity, that's Abraham. And after that, in the fourth week of his closed, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen. A law for all generations and an enclosure shall be made for them. That's Moses and the tabernacle. After that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. That's Solomon's days. After that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded. And the hearts of them will godlessly forsake wisdom, and in it a man shall ascend. That's Messiah. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. That's the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple. And the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. So you see there, it tells you they're dispersed. After that, in the seventh week shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. That's where we're at. At its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plan of righteousness to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. And it says the sword's given. Yep. And after that shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. A sword shall be given to the righteous so that a righteous judgment may exist shall be given to it that a righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors and the sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous and you see where Messiah said they'll receive mansions and see they'll acquire houses through their righteousness so that's the full it's a kind of a shortened version of the, the end there Uh, gives you some of the history. So let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Let's see. Hmm. 
Deuteronomy 32. Yep. Let's see here. Yep, according to the number of the children of God, he separated the nations. Yep, say, according to the number of the children of God, he separated the nations. The Samaritan Pentateuch's got number of the children of Israel. Wrong. According to, you go to, let's see. They, they can claim how many of our countries they want to, but this is still in effect, has not been voided. So Genesis 11. Yep, so they... From thence did he scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth, at the Tower of Babel, and the confusion of languages. All right, so. Go down here. So, Deuteronomy 32. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, if I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I'll render vengeance to my enemies and reward them that hate me. I'll make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall deliver flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of the revengers upon the enemy. Rejoice, O you nations, with his people, his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And let's see. It is also Yep. So let's go over to Isaiah eleven. We'll start there. And there shall come forth a rod out of the root of Jesse, and a blossom shall come from his root, and the spirit of Yahuwah shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and godliness shall fill him, the spirit of fear of Yahuwah, <clears throat> that's Messiah. He shall not judge according to appearance, nor reprove according to report, but he shall judge the cause of the lowly, and shall reprove the lowly of the earth. And he shall smite the earth, that's the meek, lowly. With the word of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips, he shall destroy the ungodly one. So we got... That's the thing about the, uh, let's see, lawless one. Okay, go. Let's try that one. Nope. Yeah, see. These translations, man. 
Second Thessalonians 2 8. See, here it's got translated wicked. It's lawless one. If you go to 2 8 here, uh, let's see. Two eight, go to KJV. Second Thessalonians two eight. See, so I got a wicked one. Say wicked one, animos. Yeah. So you go to the Greek word here, animos. They translate it as wicked. It's without law, transgressor, wicked, lawless, unlawful, destitute of the Mosaic law, departing from the law, violator of violator of the law, lawless, wicked. So the translation of lawless one is correct, but the KJV decided to go wicked. Then shall that lawless one be revealed, whom Yahuwah shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See? And he shall smite the earth with the word of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall destroy the ungodly one, the lawless one. He shall have his loins girt with righteousness and his sides clothed with truth. That's his law. Psalm 119, 142 and 151. And the wolf shall feed with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the young calf and the bull and the lion shall feed together and the little child shall lead them and the ox and bear shall feed together and their young shall be together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the infant shall put his hand on the holes of asp and on the nest of young asp and they shall not hurt. All that has not happened yet, nor shall they at all be able to destroy anyone on my holy mountain, New Jerusalem, for the whole world is filled with the knowledge of Yahuwah, as much as water covers the seas, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall arise to rule over the Gentiles, that's the second coming, in him shall the Gentiles trust, and his rest shall be glorious, that's the millennial reign. And it shall be in that day that Yahuwah shall again show his hand to be zealous for the remnant that is left of the people which shall be left by the Assyrians, and that from Egypt, and from the country of Babylon, and from Ethiopia. And it's interesting how Ethiopia kept Jubilees and Enoch in their scriptures, and that, that was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. They kept it this entire time. And from the Elamites, and from the rising of the sun, rising of the sun, that's the, uh, what, what's Japan? The land of the rising sun? That's the east. And out of Arabia, he shall lift up a standard for the nations, and he shall gather the lost ones of Israel, and shall gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So they're dispersed in all the nations, but he mentions uh, by name these nations. Guess what? The remnants in there, and this, some scattered in the rest of the nations. He shall gather the lost ones of Israel, and he shall gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And the envy of Ephraim shall be taken away, and the enemies of Judah shall perish. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not afflict Ephraim. They shall fly in the ships of the Philistines. They shall at the same time spoil the sea, and then that come from the east, and Idumea, and they shall lay their hands on Moab first, but the children of Moab shall first obey them. And Yahuwah shall make desolate the sea of Egypt, and he shall lay his hand on the river with a strong wind, and he shall smite the seven channels, so that men shall pass through, through it dryshod. Has that happened yet? No. And uh, why would he make desolate the sea of Egypt, and lay his hand on the river, what, the Nile? And there shall be a passage for my people that is left in Egypt, and it shall be to Israel as the day when he came forth from the land of Egypt. Now this is interesting here. If you look at the old maps, uh, Judah and Benjamin are la located in Egypt before Britain uh, colonialized and started changing maps and stuff. It said Judah and Benjamin in Egypt. My people that is left in Egypt. Well, it wasn't Egypt, but it was, it was below Egypt. And it's interesting that where they were at, was where Canaan was supposed to be at. If you read the book of Jubilees, Canaan's inheritance was on the west coast. That's where Judah and Benjamin was at. 
And where did Canaan take? Canaan took Shem's land, Israel, and then Judah and Benjamin ended up in Canaan's land. Uh, Isaiah 12, in that day thou shalt say, I will bless thee, O Yahuwah, for thou wast angry with me. Let's see if I can pull up one of the maps right quick. I'll show it to you. Does that mean all black people are Israelites, Hebrews? No. That just means that they were mixed in 2,000 years ago. So if you go, I couldn't find the real good map. If you go to God Culture, they've got a lot of those old maps that they've found. So you'll see right here. Oh, yeah, don't want me to look at it. Go figure. Uh, if you go to... Yeah. See right here? Judah. The one map that they show, it says it has Benjamin right beside Judah. And you know Benjamin and Judah were the southern kingdom. If you read when the kingdom was split, the northern ten tribes were sent to Assyria. And then Babylon took the southern two. The southern two came back. Who was there when the Messiah was there? The southern two. Who ends up over here? Judah and Benjamin after the Messiah dies. Uh, let's say, but thou hast turned aside thy wrath and hast pitied me. Behold, my Yahuwah is my Savior. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For Yahuwah is my glory and my praise and has become my salvation. Draw you therefore water with joy out of the wells of salvation. And in that day thou shalt say, Sing to Yahuwah, call aloud upon his name, proclaim his glorious deeds among the Gentiles, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing praise to the name of Yahuwah, for he has done great things. Declare this in all the earth. Exalt and rejoice, ye that dwell in Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is exalted in the midst of her. It's interesting. We can talk on the internet, and it goes across the entire earth. Isaiah 13. The vision which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw against Babylon, lift up a standard on the mountain of the plain, exalt the voice to them, beckon with a hand, open the gates, you rulers. I give command, and I bring them. Giants are coming to fulfill my wrath, rejoicing at the same time and insulting. A voice of many nations on the mountains, even like to them, to that of many nations. A voice of kings and nations gathered together. Hold on to that. And Yahuwah of hosts has given command to a warlike nation to come from a land afar off from the utmost foundation of heaven. Yahuwah and his warriors are coming to destroy all the world. How ye for the day of Yahuwah is near and destruction from Yahuwah shall arrive. Therefore every hand shall become powerless and every soul of man shall be dismayed. The elders shall be troubled and pain shall seize them as of a woman in travail. Another key word. And they shall mourn one to another, and shall be amazed, and shall change their countenance as a flame. For behold, the day of Yahuwah is coming, which cannot be escaped, a day of wrath and anger to make the world desolate, and to destroy sinners out of it. Has it happened yet? Nope. For the stars of heaven and Orion, and all the host of heaven shall not give their light, and it shall be dark at sunrise, and the moon shall not give her light. Uh. see yep Matthew 24 29 sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give light dark at sunrise the moon shall not give light and I'll commend the evils for the whole world and will visit their sins on the ungodly and I will destroy the pride of transgressors and will bring low the pride of the haughty and they that are left shall be more precious than gold tried in the fire, and a man more precious than the stone that is in Ophir. If you, if you don't know about that, you need to check out OphirInstitute.com. They've located the old maps and located the stuff that was tried. They tried to hide Ophir from us. Ophir is the Philippines. For the heaven shall be enraged, and the earth shall be shaken from her foundation because of the fierce anger of Yahuwah of hosts in the day in which his wrath shall come on. 
and they that are left shall be as a fleeing phone and as a stray sheep, and there shall be none to gather them, so that a man shall turn back to his people, and a man shall flee to his own land. For whosoever shall be taken shall be overcome, and they that are gathered together shall fall by the sword. See right there. You really got to have all the scriptures together. And if you don't, it just mess that's where that's where we all mess up. Second Ezra thirteen twenty four, know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. Matthew thirteen forty, as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. Son of man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his, see, tares taken, gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do lawlessness. And shall cast them in the furnace of fire, there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let's see. Kingdoms of this world. Revelation eleven fifteen. The seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. This world becomes his kingdom. Heaven comes to earth. The ones that offend are taken out. Uh, pre-trib rapture garbage so for who, whosoever shall be taken shall be overcome and they shall dash their children before their eyes and they shall spoil their houses and shall take their wives behold I will stir up against you the Medes who do not regard silver neither have they need of gold they shall break the bows of the young men and they shall have no mercy on your children nor shall, they, shall, shall their eyes spare thy children and Babylon which is called glorious by the king of the Chaldeans shall be as when Yahuwah overthrew Sodom Sodom and Gomorrah, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall enter, any enter into it for many generations, neither shall the Arabians pass through it, nor shall shepherds at all rest in it. But wild beasts shall rest there, and the houses shall be filled with howling, and the monsters shall rest there, and devils shall dance there, and setters shall dwell there, and hedgehogs shall make their nest in their houses. It, it will come soon, and will not tarry. So many things that connect. Habakkuk 2.3, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, it shall not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come and will not tarry. And Yahuwah, I'd go back and read all chapter 2, we, pro we might do that. Isaiah 14, And Yahuwah will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and they shall rest on their own land. And the stranger shall be added to them, yea, that shall be added to the house of Jacob. That's the Gentiles, stranger. And the Gentiles shall take them and bring them into their place, and they shall inherit them. They shall be multiplied upon the land for servants and handmaidens. And they that took them captive shall become captives to them. And they that had lordship over them shall be under their rule. And it shall come to pass in that day. See, see when he does this. Yahuwah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and vexation and from thy hard servitude wherein thou didst serve them. And thou shalt take up this lamentation against the king of Babylon. How has the extortioner ceased and the taskmaster ceased? Yahuwah has broken the yoke of sinners, the yoke of princes, having smitten a nation in wrath with an incurable plague, smiting a nation with a wrathful plague which spared them not. He rested in quiet. All the earth cries aloud with joy. The trees also of Lebanus rejoice against thee. And the cedar of Lebanon, saying, From the time that thou hast been laid low, no one has come up to cut us down. Hell from beneath is provoked to meet thee. All the great ones that have ruled over the earth have risen together against thee. They that have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, all shall answer and say to thee, Thou hast been taken, even as we, thou art numbered amongst us. 
Thy glory has come down to Hades, and thy great mirth under thee shall spread corruption, and the worm shall be thy covering. How has Lucifer that rose in the morning fallen from heaven? He that sent orders to all the nations is crushed to the earth. The other translations say, how has, it says, uh, we don't have this one, but like Jubilees and some of the Dead Sea Scrolls has Mastema. But thou said in thy heart, I will go up to heaven. I will set my throne above the stars of heaven. I will sit on a lofty mount, on the lofty mountains toward the north. I will go up above the clouds. I will be like the most high. But now shalt thou go down to hell, Sheol, even to the foundations of the earth, that they may see, shall wonder at thee, and say, This is the man that troubled the earth, that made kings to shake, that made the whole world desolate, and destroyed its cities. He loosed not those who were in captivity, and all the kings and the nations lie in honor, every man in his house. But thou shalt be cast forth on the mountains as a loathed carcass, with many dead who have been pierced with swords, going down to the graves, as a garment defiled with blood shall not be pure. So neither shalt thou be pure, because thou hast destroyed my land and hast slain my people. Thou shalt not endure forever. Thou, thou an evil seed, prepare thy children to be slain for the sins of their father, that they arise not and inherit the earth, nor be, fill the earth with wars. See, they're not going to do that no more, what they're doing now. I will rise up against them, saith Yahuwah of hosts, and I will destroy their name and remnant and seed, thus saith Yahuwah. And I will make the region of Babylon desert, so that hedgehogs shall dwell there, and shall come, it shall come to nothing. I will make it a pit of clay for destruction. Thus saith you who have host, as I have said, so it shall be, as I have purposed, so the matter shall remain, even to destroy the Assyrians upon my land. Why is he going to destroy the Assyrians upon his land? The Assyrians have to be in his land for him to destroy it, right? And upon my mountains they shall be for trampling, their yoke shall be taken away from them, and their glory shall be taken from their shoulders. Now, it's right here. So you look over here, the Assyrian language. Yeah. The Syrian. And you also Olive, Bait, Gamel, Dalit, Hay, Wall, Zion, Hate, Tate, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samak. Yep, Pay, Kaf. Resh, Shin, Tau, Assyrian. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go through here. Yeah. Aleph, Bait, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, Hay. Huh. Vav, Zion, Het, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samik, Ayan, Pei, Zadi, Resh, Shin, Tau or Tav even to destroy the Assyrians upon my land now does that mean that they can't be saved no it don't but he's going to execute judgment on the land and the people in it let's see It's a hard, hard topic right here. And the deceptions are what make it, make it even harder. So, all right. Let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So some of his people are in there. Dancing on the mountains. All 
Isaiah 18, 3, all ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye when he lifted up an instant on the mountains, when he bloweth the trumpet, hear ye. And disclaimer, if I got anything wrong, that's my fault. His word's perfect. This is the purpose which Yahuwah has purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is lifted up against all the nations. For what has what Yahuwah has purposed, who shall frustrate, and who shall turn back his uplifted hand? That's when people, when it switches from verse to verse, they might take these two together and just get confused on it. Well, this says, upon my land. And then he switches upon the earth. In the year in which King Achaz died, this word came. Rejoice not all ye Philistines, because the yoke of him that smote you is broken. For out of the seed of the serpent shall come forth the young asp, and their young shall come forth fly, flying serpents. And the poor shall be fed by him, and the poor men shall rest in peace. But he shall destroy thy seed with hunger, and shall destroy thy remnant. So you see here, the poor shall be fed by him. Bread, sure. Isaiah thirty three sixteen. He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. How ye gates of the cities. Let the cities be troubled and cry. Even all the Philistines. For smoke is coming from the north. And there is no possibility of living. And what shall the kings of the nations answer that Yahuwah has found a Zion, and by him the poor of the people shall be saved? So the kings of the nations, what shall they answer? That Yahuwah has found a Zion, New Jerusalem, and by him the poor of the people shall be saved. Isaiah 15, the word against the land of Moab, by night the land of Moab shall be destroyed, for by night the wall of the land of Moab shall be destroyed. Grieve for yourselves, for even the bond. Where your altar is shall be destroyed. Thither shall you go up to weep over Nabal of the land of Moab. How you baldness shall be on every head, and all arms shall be wounded. Gird yourselves with sackcloth in her streets, and lament upon her roofs. And in her streets and in her ways, how all you with weeping for Eshbon and Eliel have cried. Their voice was heard to Jesah. Therefore the loins of the region of Moab cry aloud. Her soul shall know. The heart of the region of Moab cries within her to Segor, for it is a heifer of three years old, and on the ascent of Luith they shall go up to the weeping by the way of Aronim. She cries destruction and trembling. The water of Nimarim shall be desolate, and the grass thereof shall fail, for there shall be no more no green grass. Shall Moab even thus be delivered? For I will bring the Arabians upon the valley, and they shall take it. For the cry has reached the border of the region of Moab, even of Agalim. And her howling has gone as far as the well of Elim, and the water of Daman shall be filled with blood, for I will bring Arabians upon Daman, and I will take away the seed of Moab and Ariel and the remnant of Adama. Let's go over here, 33. Woe to them that afflict you, but no one makes you miserable, and he that deals perfidiously with you does not deal perfidiously. They that deal perf... What in the world is that there? Let's figure out what this word means. Of relating to or marked by perfidy, treacherous, treacherously. Ah, synonym, faithless. Treacherously, faithless. Them that deal faithless shall be taken and given up as a moth on a garment, so shall they be spoiled. Yahuwah, have mercy upon us, for we have trusted in thee. The seed of the rebellious has gone to destruction. But our deliverance was in a time of affliction. By reason of the terrible sound, the nations were dismayed for fear of thee, and the heathen were scattered. And also, um, they claim the people in the land are his. Well, Scripture says if you don't, if you don't have Messiah, you're not his. You got to have Messiah. You can't just have a law. And now shall the spoils of your small and great be gathered, as if one should gather locusts, so shall they mock you. The, Yahuwah dwells on high as holy. Who dwells on high as holy? Zion is filled with judgment and righteousness. They shall be delivered up to the law. Our salvation is our treasure. There is wisdom and knowledge and piety toward Yahuwah. These are the treasures of righteousness. 
treasures of righteousness. Behold, now these shall be terrified with fear of you. Those whom you feared shall cry out because of you. That's when the sword's given to the righteous. You see that in Enoch. Messengers shall be sent, bitterly weeping, entreating for peace. For the ways of these shall be made desolate. The terror of the nations have been, has been made to cease, and the covenant with these is taken away. You shall by no means deem them men. The land mourns. Lebanus is ashamed. Saron has become marshes. Galilee shall be laid bare in Carmel. Now will I rise, saith Yahuwah, now will I be glorified, now will I be exalted, now shall you see, now shall you perceive, the strength of your breath shall be vain, fire shall devour you. Uh, you go to Second Ezra. So we've seen earlier that the uh, breath by the breath of his mouth. Uh, fire and storm. Yeah, and it tells where. Uh, yeah, it tells you where some of Israel is going to come from. Let's save that. That says law comes out of his mouth. All right, let's not get sidetracked here. Let's keep going. Nations shall be burned up as a thorn in the field cast out and burned up. They that are afar off shall hear what I have done. And they that draw nigh shall know my strength. The sinners in Zion have departed. The sinners in Zion. Zion's Jerusalem. Trembling shall seize the ungodly who will tell you that a fire is kindled who will tell you of the eternal place he that walks in righteousness so who's going to tell you this stuff he that walks in righteousness speaking rightly hating transgression and lawlessness iniquity shaking his hands from gifts stopping his ears that he should not hear the judgment of blood shutting his eyes that he should not see injustice this person he shall dwell in a high cave of a strong rock bread shall be given him his water shall be sure you shall see a king with glory. Your eyes shall behold a land from afar. Your soul shall meditate terror. Where are the scribes? Where are the counselors? Where is he that numbers them that are growing up? Even the small and great people with whom he took not counsel. Neither did he understand a people of deep speech. So that a despised people should not hear. And there is no understanding to him that hears. Behold the city Zion, our refuge. Thine eyes shall behold Jerusalem, a rich city tabernacles which shall not be shaken neither shall the pins of her tabernacle be moved forever neither shall her cords be at all broken for the name of you is great to you you shall have a place even rivers and wide and spacious channels thou shalt not go this way neither a vessel with oars go thereby for my Yahuwah is great the lord our judge it shall not pass me by <coughs> the lord our prince yahusha <coughs> yahusha is our king he yahusha he shall save us Thy cords are broken, for they had no strength. Thy mast has given way. It shall not spread the sails. It shall not bear a signal until it be given up for plunder. Therefore shall many lame men take spoil, and the people dwelling among them shall by no means say, I am in pain, for their sins shall be forgiven them. 
Draw near you nations and hearken, you princes, let the earth hear, and they that are in it, the world and the people that are therein, though the wrath of Yahuwah is upon all nations, and his anger upon the number of them to destroy them and give them up to the slaughter. And their slain shall be cast forth, and their corpses and their ill savor shall come up, and the mountains shall be made wet with their blood, and the powers of the heavens shall melt, and the skies shall be rolled up like a scroll, and all the stars shall fall like leaves from a vine, and as leaves fall from a fig tree, Matthew twenty four thirty two. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. The sky rolled up like a scroll. But my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So what's he talking about? This right here, same thing. Fig tree, sky rolled up as a scroll. My sword has been made drunk in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, and with judgment upon the people doomed to destruction. The sword of Yahuwah is filled with blood. It is glutted with fat, with the blood of goats and lambs, and with the fat of goats and rams. For Yahuwah has a sacrifice in Bosar, and a great slaughter in Idumea. And the mighty ones shall fall with them, and the rams and the bulls. And the land shall be soaked with blood, and shall be filled with their fat. For it is the day of judgment of Yahuwah, and the year of the recompense of Zion and judgment. And her valley shall be turned into pitch, and her land into sulfur, and her land shall be as pitch burning night and day. It shall never be quenched, and her smoke shall go out, go up. It shall be made desolate throughout her generations. And for a long time birds and hedgehogs and abysses and ravens shall dwell in it, and the measuring line of desolation shall be cast over it, and satyrs shall dwell in it. Her princes shall be no more, for her kings and her great men shall be destroyed. And thorns shall spring up in their cities and in her strongholds, and they shall be habitations of monsters and a court of ostriches, and devils shall meet the satyrs, and they shall cry one to the other. There shall satyrs rest, having found for themselves a place of rest. There has the hedgehog made its nest, and the earth has safely preserved its young. There have the deer met and seen one another's faces. They passed by in full number, and not one of them perished. They sought not one another. For Yahuwah commanded them, and his spirit gathered them, and he shall cast lots for them. And his hand has portioned out their pasture, saying, You shall inherit the land forever. They shall rest on it through, through all generations. You shall inherit, not, not you, you did inherit, no, you shall inherit it. Be glad, thou thirsty desert, let the wilderness exalt, and flower as a lily, and the desert places of Jordan shall blossom and rejoice. The glory of Lebanus has been given to it in the honor of Carmel, and my people shall see the glory of Yahuwah and the majesty of Yahuwah. Glory of Yahusha, majesty of Yahuwah. Be strong, you relaxed hands and pulsed knees. Comfort one another, you faint-hearted. Be strong, fear not. Behold, our Yahuwah renders judgment, and he will render it. He will come and save us. Then shall the eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall hear. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the stammerer shall speak pain plainly. For water has burst forth in the desert, and a channel of water in thirsty land, and the dry land shall become pools, and the fountain of water shall be poured into the thirsty land. There shall there be a joy of birds, ready habitations and marshes. There shall be there a pure way, and it shall be called a holy way, and there shall not pass by there any unclean person, neither shall there be there an unclean way, but the dispersed shall walk on it, and they shall not go astray. There shall be no lion there, neither shall any evil beast go up upon it, nor at all be found there. But the redeemed and gathered on Yahuwah's behalf shall walk in it, and shall return and come to Zion with joy, and everlasting joy shall be over their head. For on their head shall be praise and exaltation, and joy shall take possession of them. Sorrow and pain and groaning have fled away. Uh, let's go to... So here, Second Ezra, which was part of our Bible... For a long time and removed in the late 1800s.
Behold, the days come when the Most High, this is chapter 13, and the Messiah quotes it, Jerusalem is desolate, or behold, I make your, your house desolate, chapter 1. Let's see. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. He shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. Matthew 24, 7, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There should be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in adverse places. So, give me answers. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall lay down their own, their own land shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. So that's what we're waiting on now. <clears throat> and an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand on top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men. I got too many tabs open here. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, Revelation 21, 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahuwah out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And Zion shall come be showed to all men. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments, wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me the breath of his mouth, and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. So what's the peaceable multitude? These are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, the northern kingdom. And he carried them over the waters, so they came into another land. But they took counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where ne never man can dwell, that they might there keep my, their statues which they never kept in their own land and they entered into euphrates by the narrow places of the river for when the most high for the most high then showed signs for them and held still by the flood till they were passed over and through that country there was a great way to go namely of a year and a half in the same region as called arzareth then dwelt they there until the latter time and now when they shall begin to come america is not arzareth the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace. Yeah, they went across Euphrates into the east. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. I'll skip the verse. But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within thy borders. Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. Then how shall he show them great wonders? Now, so that's part of Israel there. So you got part of it's leading into the south where Judah and Benjamin went. And part of it's leading into the east where the northern kingdom went. Does that mean they're not all scattered through the nation? Thousands of years, yeah, they're scattered through the nations, but they're, they're definitely places that they went and they still remained a people group. So, let's see. It's going to be Isaiah. Yeah, let me take just a short break. I'll be right back. Happy Sabbath, Shelby.
You slept late. All right. All right. So Isaiah 42, Jacob is my servant. I will help him. Israel, my chosen. My soul has accepted him. I put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up his voice, nor shall his voice be heard without. A bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench, but he shall bring forth judgment to truth. He shall shine out and shall not be discouraged until he have set judgment on the earth, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. That's Messiah. Thus saith Yahuwah, Elohim, who made the heaven and established it, who settled the earth and the things in it, and gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to them that tread on it. I, Yahuwah, have called thee, Yahuwah Elohim, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will strengthen thee. I have given thee for the, the covenant of a race, for a light to the Gentiles. See, it's still a covenant. To open the eyes of the blind, to bring the, brat, the bound and them that sit in darkness out of bonds in the prison house. I am Yahuwah Elohim, that is my name. I will not give gl my glory to another, nor my praises to graven images. Behold, the ancient things have come to pass, and so will the new things which I tell you. Yea, before I tell them, they are made known to you. Sing a new hymn to Yahuwah, ye who are his dominion. Glorify his name from the end of the earth, you that go down to the sea and sell upon it, the islands and they that dwell in them the islands rejoice thou wilderness and the villages thereof the hamlets and the dwellers in Kedar the inhabitants of the rocks shall rejoice they shall shout from the top of the mountains we've seen this earlier they shall give glory to Yahuwah and shall proclaim his praises in the islands and a lot of people say like Britain and stuff the islands but when I see the islands and how many times he talks about Ophir and Sheba and Tarshish and the ends of the earth the islands the Philippines Yahuwah Elohim of hosts shall go forth and crush the war. He shall stir up jealousy and shall shout mightily against his enemies. I have been silent. Shall I always be silent and forbear? I have endured like a travailing woman. There it is again. I will now amaze and wither at once. I will make desolate mountains and hills and will dry up all their grass. I will make the rivers islands and dry up the pools. We've seen that earlier. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will cause them to tread paths which they have not known. I will turn darkness into light for them and crooked things into straight. These things will I do and will not forsake them, but they are turned back. Be ye utterly ashamed that trust in graven images, who say to molten images, you are, are gods. Hear you deaf and look up, you blind to see, and who is blind but my servants, and deaf but they that rule over them. Yea, the servants of Yahuwah have been made blind. You have often seen and have not taken heed. Your ears have been opened and you have not heard. Yahuwah Elohim has taken counsel that he might be justified and might magnify his praise. And I beheld and the people were spoiled and plundered for there is a snare in the secret chambers everywhere and in the houses also where they have hidden them. They became a spoil and there was no one that delivered the prey and there was none who said restore. Who is there among you that will give ear to these things? Hearken ye to the things which are coming to pass. For what did he give Jacob? For what did he give Jacob up to spoil and to and Israel to them that plundered him? Did not Yahuwah do it against whom they sinned? What do we say? See earlier with the branches, uh, be not high-minded. So the the original branches were broken off, so you could be grafted in. And they should, they would not walk in his ways nor hearken to his law. So he brought upon them the fury of his wrath and the war, and those that burnt round about them prevail, prevailed against them, yet no one of them knew it, neither did they lay it to heart. And now thus saith Yahuwah Elohim that made thee, O Jacob, and formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine, and if thou pass through water, I am with thee, and the river shall not overflow thee, and if thou go through fire, thou shalt not be burned, the flame shall not burn thee. It all goes back to what we've seen before. For I am Yahuwah thy Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, that saves thee. I have made Egypt and Ethiopia thy ransom. There it is again. And given so, so on for thee, since thou becamest precious in my sight, thou hast become glorious, and I have loved thee. And I will give men for thee, and princes for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east, and will gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, bring, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from the land afar off, and my daughters, daughters from the ends of the earth. 
even all who are called by my name, for I have prepared him for my glory, and I have formed him and have made him, and I have brought forth the blind people, their eyes, for their eyes are like alike blind, and they ha they that have ears are deaf. So it tells you that's the regathering there. All the nations are gathered together, and the princes shall be gathered out of them. Who will declare these things? The princes, his saints, all nations gathered together. Who will declare the, to these to you things from the beginning? Uh, that's interesting because Enoch was written at the beginning, the first prophet, the first one to write. Book of Jubilees tells you he was the first to write. Let them bring forth their witnesses and be justified. Let them hear and declare the truth. Be ye my witnesses, and I too am a witness, saith Yahuwah Elohim, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there was no other God, and after me there shall be none. I am Yahuwah, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have reproached, and there was no strange God among you. You are my witnesses, and I am Yahuwah Elohim. Even from the beginning, and there is none that can deliver out of my hands. I will work, and who shall turn it back? Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim that redeems you, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes I will send to Babylon, and I will stir up all that flee. And the Chaldeans shall be bound in ships. I am Yahuwah Elohim, your Holy One, who have appointed for Israel your king. Thus saith Yahuwah, who makes a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty water who brought forth chariots and horse and a mighty multitude, but they have lain down and shall not rise. They are extinct and are quenched flat as quenched flax. Remember you not the former things and consider not the ancient things. Behold, I will do new things, which shall presently spring forth, Second Exodus. And you shall know them, and I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in dry land. The beasts of the field shall bless me, the owls and young ostriches, for I have given water in the wilderness and rivers in the dry land to give drink to my chosen race. Hmm. So race matters. Like he said. Israel, his chosen race. Romans 11. Paul said, has he cast away Israel? Nope. Even my people whom I have preserved to tell forth my praises, I have not now called thee, O Jacob, neither have I made thee weary, O Israel. So he tells you right there, his chosen race. Jacob, Israel, thou hast not brought me the sheep of thy whole burnt offering, neither hast thou glorified me with thy sacrifices. I have not caused thee to serve with sacrifices, neither have I wearied thee with frankincense. And the Messiah is our sacrifice, so he hasn't made us to do this. Neither hast thou purchased for me victims for silver, neither have I desired the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou didst stand before me in thy sins and in thy iniquities. I, even I, am he that blots out thy transgressions for my own sake. It's for his own sake, not for our sakes. All praise and glory goes to the Father. Even the Messiah said that. And thy sins, and I will not remember them. But do thou remember and let us plead together. Do thou first confess thy transgressions, that thou mayest be justified. Your fathers first, and your princes have transgressed against me, and the princes have defiled my sanctuaries. So I gave Jacob to enemies to destroy, and Israel to reproach. But now hear Jacob my servant and Israel whom I have chosen. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim that made thee and he that formed thee from the womb. Thou shalt be yet be helped. Fear not my servant Jacob and beloved Israel whom I have chosen. For I will give water to the thirsty that walk in a dry land. I say bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Isaiah 33. I will put my spirit upon thy seed and my blessings upon thy children, and they shall spring up as grass between brooks and as willows of the, on the banks of running water. One shall say, I am Yahuwah's. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall write with his hand, I am Yahuwah's, and shall call himself by the name of Israel. Israelites. That's what Paul said. We're grafted in. We're not Jew or Gentile. We're Israel. Israelites. Thus saith Yahuwah, the king of Israel, and the Elohim of hosts that delivered him, I am the first, and I am hereafter. Beside me there is no, no God who is like me. Let him stand and call and declare and prepare for, for me from the time that I made man forever, and let them tell you the things that are coming before they arrive. Hide not yourselves, nor go astray. Have you not heard from the beginning, and have not I told you, your witnesses, if there is no Elohim beside me? But they that framed false gods did not then hearken, and they that graved images are all vain, performing their own desires, which shall not profit them, but they shall be ashamed, that form a god, and all that grave worthless things, and all by whom 
they were made are withered. Yea, let all the death be gathered from among men, and let them stand together. Let them be ashamed and confounded together. For the artificer sharpens the iron, he fashions the idol with an axe, and fixes it with an awl, and fashions it with the strength of his arm, and he will be hungry and weak, and will drink no water. The artificer, having chosen a piece of wood, marks it out with a rule, and fits it with glue, and makes it, in it as the form of a man, and as the beauty of a beat of a man. To set it up in the house, he cuts wood out of the forest, which Yahuwah planted, even a pine tree, and the rain made it grow, that it might be for men to burn, and having taken part of it, he warms himself, yea, they burn part of it, and bake loaves thereon, and of the rest they make for themselves gods, and they worship them, half thereof he burns in the fire, and with half of it he bakes loaves on the coals, and having roasted flesh on it, he eats, and is satisfied, and having warmed himself, he says, I am comfortable, for I have warmed myself, and have seen the fire, and the rest he makes a graven god, and worships, and prays, saying, Deliver me, for thou art my god. They have no understanding to perceive, for they have been blinded, so that they should not see with their eyes, nor perceive with their heart, and no one has considered in his mind, nor known in his understanding, that he has burnt up half of it in the fire, and baked loaves on the coals thereof, and has roasted and eaten flesh. And of the rest of it has made an abomination, and they worship it. Know thou that their heart is ashes, and they err, and no one is able to deliver his soul. See, ye will not say, There is a lie in my right hand. Remember these things, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee to be my servant, and do thou, Israel, not forget me. For behold, I have blotted out as a cloud thy transgressions, and thy sin as darkness turn to me, and I will redeem thee. Rejoice, you heavens, for Yahuwah has had mercy upon Israel. Sound the trumpet, you foundations of the earth, you mountains, shout with joy, ye hills, and all the trees therein, for Yahuwah has redeemed Jacob, and Israel shall be glorified. Thus saith Yahuwah that redeems thee, who formed thee from the womb. I am Yahuwah that performs all things. I stretched out the heavens alone and established the earth. Who else will frustrate the tokens of those that have divining spirits and prophecies from the heart of man, turning the wise back and making their counsel foolishness and confirming the word of his servant and verifying the counsel of his messengers, who says to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Idumea you shall be built, and her desert places shall spring forth. So they will be inhabited, and the desert places shall spring forth. Who says to the deep, Thou shalt be dried up, and I will dry up the rivers. Who bids Cyrus be wise, and he shall perform all my will. Who says to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and I will lay the foundation of my holy house. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll read this one too. Isaiah 45, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim to my anointed Cyrus. Uh, I think Cyrus was stuck in there. I can't remember where I seen that at. Just say, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim to my anointed. They'll do stuff like that. You'll see Cyrus and go, Okay, so this is something different. No, it's not. It goes with Isaiah 44. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim to my anointed, whose right hand I have held, that nations might be obedient before him. I will break through the strength of kings. I will open doors before him, and the cities shall not be closed. I will go before thee, and will level mountains. I will break to pieces brazen doors, and will burst iron bars. I will give thee the treasures of darkness, and I will open the hidden, to thee hidden, unseen treasures, that thou mayest know that I, Yahuwah thy Elohim, that called thee by name, am the God of Israel, for the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel mine elect, whose is elect, Israel, I will call thee by thy name and accept thee, but thou hast not known me, for I am Yahuwah the Elohim, and there is no other God beside me. I strengthen thee, and thou hast not known me, that they that come from the east and they that come from the west may know that there is no God but me. I am Yahuwah Elohim, and there is none beside. I am he that prepared light and formed darkness, who make peace and create evil. I am Yahuwah Elohim that does all these things. Let the heaven rejoice from above, and let the clouds rain righteousness. Let the earth bring forth and blossom with mercy, and bring forth righteousness likewise. I am Yahuwah that created thee. What excellent thing have I prepared as a clay of the potter? As clay of the potter, will the plowman plow the earth all day? Shall the clay say to the potter, What art thou doing that thou dost not work, nor hast hands? Shall the thing formed answer him that formed it? And though one should say to his father, Will 
what wilt thou be, beget me? And to his mother, what art thou bringing forth? For thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, the Holy One of Israel, who has formed the things that are to come, inquire of me concerning my sons, and concerning the works of my hands command me. I have made the earth and man upon it. I will with my hand... I with my hand have established the heaven. I have given commandment to all the stars. I have raised him up to be king with righteousness, and all his ways are right. He shall build my city, and he shall turn the captivity of my people. Shall turn captivity of my people, not for ransoms nor for rewards, saith Yahuwah of hosts. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, Egypt has labored for thee, and the merchandise of the Ethiopians and the Sabaeans, men of stature, shall pass over thee, shall, and shall be thy servants. They shall follow after thee, bound in fetters, shall follow after thee. Egypt, Ethiopians, Sabaeans, and shall pass over to thee, and shall do obeisance to thee, and make supplication to thee, because Yahuwah is in thee, and there is no God beside thee, O Yahuwah. For thou art Yahuwah, yet we knew it not, the God of Israel, the Savior, all men are all that are opposed to him shall be ashamed and confounded and shall walk in shame. You owls keep a feast to me. Israel is saved by Yahuwah with an everlasting salvation. They shall not be ashamed nor confounded forevermore. Isaiah 45, 16. See, this is where it's, it's good to compare. Check behind them. Men just can't help themselves from messing stuff up. It's 45, 16. Well, they can't help themselves, but they don't. <coughs> yeah. You shall not be ashamed. The Savior. The Savior. Next verse. They shall be ashamed. I'll skip out all them. They shall go to feet to make them some idols. Yeah, see, it don't say nothing about keeping a feast to him. Go over here to the Septuagint. You isles, keep a feast to me. <coughs> Israel is saved by Yahuwah with an everlasting salvation. They shall not be ashamed nor confounded forevermore. Thus saith Yahuwah that made heaven. This God that created the earth and made it, he marked it out. He made it not in vain, but formed it to be inhabited. I am Yahuwah, and there is none beside. I have not spoken in secret, nor in a dark place of the earth. I said not to the seed of Jacob, seek vanity. I, even I, am Yahuwah, speaking righteousness and proclaiming truth. Assemble yourselves and come. Take counsel together, ye that escape of the nations. They that set up wood, even their graven image, have no knowledge, nor they who pray to gods that do not save. If they will declare, let them draw nigh, that they may know together who has caused these things to be heard from the beginning. Then was it told you, I am Yahuwah, and there is not another beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none but me. Turn you to me, and you shall be saved, you that come from the end of the earth. I am Yahuwah, and there is none other. By myself I swear, righteousness shall, be surely, shall surely proceed out of my mouth. My word shall not be frustrated, that to me every knee shall bend, and every tongue shall swear by Yahuwah, saying, Righteousness and glory shall come to him, and all that remove them from their borders shall be ashamed. By Yahuwah shall they be justified, and in Yahuwah shall all the seed of the children of Israel be glorified. Let's see... So we'll go to Isaiah 65. I became manifest to them that asked not for me. I was found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold, I am here to a nation who, has, who called not on my name. I have stretched forth my hands all day to a disobedient and gainsaying people, to them that walked in a way that was not good, but after their sins. This is the people that provokes me continually in my presence. They offer sacrifices in gardens and burn incense on bricks to devils, which exist not. They lie down to sleep in the tombs and in the caves for the sake of dreams, even they that eat swine's flesh. So uh, Judaism, they don't eat swine's flesh. Is he talking to them? Nope. And the broth of their sacrifices, all their vessels are defiled, who say, Depart from me, draw not nigh to me. 
For I am pure, this is the smoke of my wrath, the fire burns with it continually. Behold, it is written before me, I will not be silent until I have recompense into their bosom, their sins and the sins of their fathers, saith Yahuwah, who have burnt incense on the mountains and have reproached me on the hills. I will recompense their works into their bosom. Thus saith Yahuwah, as a great stone shall be found in the cluster, and they shall say, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for the sake of him that serves me. For his sake I will not destroy them all. Sounds like Abraham. If there's ten righteous in the city, will you not destroy it? And I will lead forth the seed that came from Jacob and of Judah, and they shall inherit my holy mountain and mine elect, and my servant shall inherit it and shall dwell there. And there shall be in the forest folds of flocks, and the valley of Achor shall be for a resting place of herds for my people who have sought me. But ye are they that have left me and forgot forget my holy mountain and prepare a table for the devil and fill up the drink offering to fortune i will deliver you up to the sword you shall all fall by slaughter for i called you and you hearken not i spoke and you refused to hear and you did evil in my sight and chose the things wherein i delighted not therefore thus saith yahuwah behold my servant shall eat but you shall hunger behold my servant shall drink but you shall thirst we saw that earlier behold my servant shall rejoice but you shall be ashamed Behold, my servant sh shall exult with joy, but you shall cry for the sorrow of your heart, and shall howl for the vexation of your spirit. For you shall leave your name for loathing to my chosen, and Yahuwah shall destroy you. But my servant shall be called by a new name, shall be called by a new name. That means then they're going to be called by a new name. Not like uh, some preach that they get their new name now. Which shall be blessed on the earth, for they shall bless the true Yahuwah. And they that swear upon the earth shall swear by the true Yahuwah, for they shall forget the former affliction, and it shall not come into their mind. For there shall be a new heaven and a new earth. All right. So then there's a new heaven and a new earth. We've got to put things in biblical order. Things have to happen first. Let's see. So Isaiah 66, Thus saith Yahuwah, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build me? And what kind of kind is to be the place of my rest? For all these things are mine, saith Yahuwah, and to whom will I have respect? But to the humble and the meek and the man that trembles at my words. But the transgressor that sacrifices a calf to me is as he that kills a dog, and he that offers fine flour as one that offers swine's blood. He that gives frankincense for a memorial is as a blasphemer. Yet they have chosen their own ways, and their soul has delighted in their abominations. I also will choose their mockeries, and will recompense their sins upon them. Because I called them, and they did not hearken to me. I spoke, and they heard not. And they did evil before me, and chose the things wherein I delighted not. Hear the words of Yahuwah, you that tremble at his word. Speak ye, our brethren, to them that hate you and abominate you, that the name of Yahuwah may be glorified, and may appear their joy, but they shall be ashamed." A voice of a cry from the city, a voice from the from the temple, a voice of Yahuwah rendering recompense to his adversaries. Before she that travailed brought forth, before the travail pain came on, she escaped it and brought forth a male. Who has heard such a thing, and who has seen after this manner? Has the earth travailed in one day, or has even a nation been born at once, that Zion has travailed and brought forth her children? But I have raised this expectation, yet thou hast not remembered me, saith Yahuwah. Behold, have not I made... The bearing and the barren woman, Paul talks about that in Galatians, saith Yahuwah, Rejoice, O Jerusalem, and all ye that love her, hold in her a general assembly, rejoice greatly in her, all that now mourn over her, that you may suck and be satisfied with the rest of her consolation, that you may milk out and delight yourselves with the influx of her glory. For thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I turn toward them as a river of peace, and a, as a torrent bringing upon them in a flood the glory of the Gentiles. Their children shall be born upon their, the shoulders and comforted on the knees as if his mother should comfort one, so will I also comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem, and you shall see, and your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall thrive like grass, and the hand of Yahuwah shall be known to them that fear him, and he shall threaten the disobedient. For behold, Yahuwah will come as a fire, and his chariots as a storm, to render vengeance with wrath, and his rebuke with a flame of fire. For with a fire... Of Yahuwah, all the earth shall be judged, and all flesh with his sword. Many shall be slain by Yahuwah. And got here the new heavens and the new earth. So the regathering, 
then the flaming fire. So, Jeremiah. Let's see. So, you go down here. If you're looking up Jeremiah in the Septuagint, you can tell Jeremiah's been all out of whack. So, we're looking for Jeremiah 16 in the regular book. So, 16 and 23 corresponds right. So, in the Septuagint, it should be the same as the regular translation. Jeremiah 16, And thou shalt not take a wife, saith Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, and there shall be no son born to thee, nor daughter in this place. For thus saith Yahuwah concerning the sons, and concerning the daughters that are born in this place, and concerning their mothers that have mourned them, and concerning their fathers that have begotten them in this land. They shall die of grievous death. They shall not be lamented nor buried. They shall be for an example on the face of the earth, and they shall be for wild beasts of the land, and for the birds of the sky. They shall fall by the sword and shall be consumed with famine. That's when Israel was taken. So you got so say in in your days the voice of joy, the voice of gladness, voice of bridegroom, voice of bride. I'll make the sea out of this place before your eyes. So he goes. Matthew 9, 15. And Yahushua said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away. Then they shall fast. Then they shall mourn. Voice of the bridegroom, voice of the bride. Okay, so here, verse eleven. Then sh thou shalt say to them, because your fathers forsook me. So why why did you do this? And went after strange gods and served them and worshipped them and forsook me and kept not my law. And you sin worse than your fathers. For behold, ye every one walk. You walk everyone after the lust of his own evil heart, so as not to hearken to me. Therefore I will cast you off from this good land into land which neither you nor your fathers have known. You shall serve their other gods who shall have no mercy upon you. So that happened. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, when they shall no more say, Yahuwah lives, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's the first Exodus. But Yahuwah lives who brought up the the house of Israel from the land of the north and from all countries whither they were thrust out. And I'll restore them to their own land, which I gave to their fathers. Do they still talk about the first Exodus? Yes, so the regathering has not happened yet. He said they're not going to talk about it. So it can't be his people in the land. It just can't. You see all through the scripture. Behold, I will send many fishers, saith Yahuwah, and they shall fish them. And afterwards I will send many hunters, and they shall hunt them upon every mountain and upon every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks, for mine eyes are upon all their ways, and their iniquities have not been hidden from mine eyes. And I will recompense their mischiefs doubly, and their sins, whereby they have profaned my land with the carcasses of their abominations, and with their iniquities, whereby they have trespassed against mine inheritance." See, they have profaned my land. Does it say is is his people in it profaning his land? It says they're they're profaning his land. O oh, Yahuwah, thou art my strength and mine help, my refuge in the days of evil. To thee the Gentiles shall come from the end of the earth and shall say, How vain were the idols which our fathers procured to themselves, and there is no help in them. Will a man make gods for himself, whereas these are no gods? Therefore, behold, I will at this time manifest my hand to them, and will make known to them my power, and they shall know that I, my name is Yahuwah. So they will know his name is Yahuwah. Jeremiah 23. Let's see. 
So you see here also, therefore behold the days come, saith Yahuwah, when they shall no more say, Yahuwah lives, who brought the house of Israel out of the land of Egypt. They're still talking about it. But Yahuwah lives, who gathered the whole seed of Israel from the north land and from all countries, whither he had driven them out and has restored them into their own land. So, let's see if this lines up. 30. Go back. So go back down here. We're looking for Jeremiah 30, so it'll be 37 in the Septuagint. 37. The word that came to Jeremiah from Yahuwah, saying, Thus speaks Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, saying, Write all the words which I have spoken to thee in a book. For behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, when I will bring back the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. Said Yahuwah, I will bring them back into the land which I gave their fathers, and they shall be lords of it. These are the words which Yahuwah spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus saith Yahuwah, you shall hear a sound of fear. There is fear, and there is not peace. Inquire and see if a, man, a male has born a child, and ask concerning the fear wherein they shall hold their loins and look for safety. Keep this in mind. First Thessalonians 5 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Travail upon a woman with child. For I have seen every man and his hands are on his loins, their faces are turned to paleness, for that day is great, and there is not such another, and is a time of straightness to Jacob, but he shall be saved out of it. In that day, saith you, I will break the yoke off their neck and will burst their bonds, and they shall no longer serve strangers, but they shall serve Yahuwah their Elohim, and I will raise up to them David their king. And as far as uh, everybody, most people are concerned, we're still under Babylon. We're under the yoke of servitude, taxes and everything else. All lands. Thus saith you, who I have brought on thee destruction. Thy stroke is painful. There is none to judge thy cause. Thou hast been painfully treated for healing. There is no help for thee. All thy friends have forgotten thee. They shall not ask about thee at all. For I have smitten thee with the stroke of an enemy, even severe correction. Thy sins have abounded above all thine iniquity. Therefore all that devour thee shall be eaten, and all thine enemies shall eat all their own flesh. Thy sins have abounded beyond the multitude of thine iniquities. Therefore they have done these things to thee. And they that spoil thee shall become a spoil, and I will give up to be plundered all that have plundered thee, for I will bring about thy healing. I will heal thee of grievous of thy grievous wound, saith Yahuwah, for thou art called dispersed. She is your prey, for no one seeks after her, dispersed. Uh, Daniel 12 in the Septuagint, Thompson translation, when the dispersion is over, they will know all these things. At the time of the end, they will know. Thus saith Yahuwah, well, at the time of the end, knowledge will be increased. Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will turn the captivity of Jacob, and will have pity upon his prisoners, and the city shall be built upon her hill, and the people shall settle after their manner, and there shall go forth from them singers, even the sound of men making merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not at all be diminished, and their sons shall go in as before, and their testimony shall be established before me, and I will visit them that afflict them. And their mighty ones shall be over them, and their prince shall proceed of themselves. And I will gather them, and they shall return to me. For who is this that has set his heart to return to me, saith Yahuwah? For the wrathful anger of Yahuwah has gone forth, even a whirlwind of anger has gone forth. It shall come upon the ungodly. The fierce anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he execute it, and until he shall establish the purpose of his heart. In the latter days you shall know these things. Uh, let's go to Daniel. Pull this up right quick. Try not to make this video real long, but it's it's a big topic. Like it's there's no way to make it short. Daniel twelve. Uh let's see. Yep, at that time all thy people who are enrolled in the book of life shall be saved. Tribulation. That's what Messiah quotes, has not been on the earth since there was a nation, even until this time. Yep. Well, the Thompson translation I have of there is a little bit different. When an end is put to the dispersion, they will know all these things. And... 
until the time of the end. Yeah. Seal the book till the time of accomplishment, till many be taught and knowledge abound. My translation says till the time of the end. So, 38, at that time saith Yahuwah, I will be a God to the family of Israel, and they shall be my, to me a people. Thus saith Yahuwah, I found him warm in the wilderness with him, them that were slain with the sword. Go ye and destroy not Israel. Yahuwah appeared to him from afar, saying, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore have I drawn thee in compassion, for I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt yet take thy timbrel and go forth with the party of them that make merry. For you have planted vineyards on the mountains of Samaria, plant ye in praise, for it is a day when those that plead on the mountains of Ephraim shall call, saying, Arise ye, and go up to the Zion, to Yahuwah your Elohim. For thus saith Yahuwah uh, to Jacob, Rejoice ye, and exult over the head of the nations, make proclamation, and praise ye, say, Yahuwah has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north, and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover, and the people shall beget a great multitude, and shall return hither. They went forth with weeping, and I will bring them back with consolation, causing them to lodge by the channels of rivers in a straight way, and they shall not err in it, for I am become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Let's see. Yep. So I'll go to Ezekiel 20. And it came to pass in the seventh year, on the fifteenth day of the month, there came men of the elders of the house of Israel to inquire of Yahuwah, and they sat before me. And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the elders of the house of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, I will not be inquired of by you, saith Yahuwah. Shall I utterly take vengeance on them, son of man? Testify to them of the iniquities of their fathers, and thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah. From the day that I chose the house of Israel and became known to the seed of Jacob and was known to them in the land of Egypt and helped them with my hand, saying, I am Yahuwah your Elohim. In that day I have helped them with my hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt into the land which I prepare for them, a land flowing with milk and honey. It is abundant beyond every land. And I said to them, Let everyone cast away the abominations of his eyes and devour not yourselves with the devices of Egypt. I am Yahuwah your Elohim. But they revolted from me and would not hearken to me. They cast not away the abominations of their eyes and forsook, forsook not the devices of Egypt. Then I said that I would pour out my wrath upon them to accomplish my wrath upon them in the midst of Egypt. But I wrought so that my name should not at all be, not be at all profane in the sight of the Gentiles in the midst of whom they are, among whom I was made known to them in their sight to bring them out of the land of Egypt. And I brought them into the wilderness and I gave them my commandments and made known to them mine ordinances all which if a man shall do, he shall even live in them. And I gave them my Sabbath, that they should be for a sign, a mark between me and them, that they should know that I am Yahuwah that sanctify them. And I said to the house of Israel in the wilderness, Walk you in my commandments, but they walk not in them, and they rejected mine ordinances, which if a man shall do, he shall even live in them. And they grievously profaned my Sabbath. And I said that I would pour out my wrath upon them in the wilderness to consume them, but I wrought so that my name should not be at all profane before the Gentiles before whose eyes I brought them out. But I lifted up my hand against them in the wilderness once for all, that I would bring not bring them into the land which I gave them, a land flowing with milk and honey it is sweeter than all lands, because they rejected mine ordinances and walked not in my commandments, but profaned my Sabbaths and went after the imaginations of their hearts. Yet my eyes spared them so as not to destroy them utterly, and I did not make an end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, Walk not you in the customs of your fathers, and keep not their ordinances, and have no fellowship with their practices, nor defile yourselves with them. I am Yahuwah your Elohim, walk in my commandments, and keep mine ordinances, and do them, and hallow my Sabbaths, and let them be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Yahuwah your Elohim. Sabbaths. Mark. But they provoked me, and their children walked not in my commandments, and they took no heed to mine ordinances to do them, which if a man shall do, he, he shall even live in them, and they profaned my Sabbaths. Then I said that I would pour out my wrath upon them in the wilderness to accomplish mine anger upon them. But I wrought so that my name might not be at all profaned before the Gentiles, and I brought them out in their sight. I lifted up my hand against them in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the Gentiles and disperse them in the countries. Because they kept not mine ordinances, and rejected my commandments, and profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes went after the imaginations of their fathers. So they got scattered. 
So I gave them commandments that were not good and ordinances in which they should not live. And I will defile them by their own decrees when I pass through ev upon everyone that opens the womb that I may destroy them. So he scattered them and he gave them commandments that were not good and ordinances in which they should not live. And I will defile them by their own decrees. What, what happened in the land of the Gentiles? We get the Gentile laws. He gave them up to the Gentiles. Commandments that were not good. Ordinances which in they should not live. And defiled them by their own decrees. Is that his stuff that he gave them? He said it's not good. No, no stuff he gave them is good. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel. And thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah, Hitherto have your fathers provoked me in their trespasses in which they have transgressed against me. Whereas I brought them into the land concerning which I lifted up mine hand to give them. And they looked upon every high hill and every shady tree. And they sacrificed there to their gods and offered their sweet smelling savor. And there they poured out their drink offerings. And I said to them, What is Obama that you go in thither? And they called its name Obama until this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus saith Yehud, Do you pollute yourselves with the iniquities of your fathers? And do you go whoring after their abominations? And do you pollute yourselves with the first fruits of your gifts? And the offerings wherewith you pollute yourselves in all your imaginations until this day? And shall I answer you, O house of Israel, as I live, saith Yehud? I will not answer you, neither shall this thing come upon your spirit. It shall, and it shall not be as you say, we will be as the nations and as the tribes of the earth to worship stocks and stones. Therefore, as I live, saith Yahuwah, I will reign over you with a strong hand and with a high arm. And with outpoured wrath, I will bring you out from the nations and will take you out of the lands wherein you were dispersed with a strong hand and with a high arm and with outpoured wrath. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations and will plead with you there face to face. So he's going to take you out of the nations and he's going to bring you into the wilderness just like the first time. And I, as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I judge you, saith Yahuwah, and I will cause you to pass under my rod, and I will bring you in by number, and I will separate from among you the ungodly and the revolters, for I will lead them forth out of their place of sojourning, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I, Yahuwah, I am Yahuwah, even Yahuwah. And as to you, O house of Israel, thus saith Yahuwah, even Yahuwah, Put away each one of his evil practices, and hereafter, if you hearken to me, then shall you no more profane my holy name by your gifts and by devices. For upon my holy mountain and on the high mountain, saith Yahuwah, even Yahuwah, there shall all the house of Israel serve me forever, and there will I accept you, and there will I have respect to your first fruits and the first fruits of your offerings and all your holy things. I will accept you with sweet smelling Savior when I bring you out from the nations and take you out of the countries wherein you have been dispersed. I will be sanctified among you in the sight of the nations, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have brought you into the land of Israel, into the land concerning which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And you shall there remember your ways and your devices wherein you defiled yourselves, and you shall be well yourselves for all your wickedness. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have done thus to you, that my name may not be profaned in your evil ways and your corrupt devices, saith Yahuwah. Ezekiel 33. You got, let's see, Abraham was one. Ezekiel 33, 24. So here's, a, in the middle of, they broke the chapter man broke the chapter in the scroll there was no chapter break if you go down here to verse 21 ezekiel 33 and it came to pass in the tenth year of our captivity in the twelfth month on the fifth day of the month that one that has escaped from jerusalem came to me saying the city is taken now the hand of yahuwah had come upon me in the evening before he came and he opened my mouth when he came to me in the morning and my mouth was open it was no longer kept closed and the word of yahuwah came to me saying son of man they that inhabit the desolate places on the land of israel say the word of Yahuwah came to me. Prophecy. Abraham was one and he possessed the land and we are more numerous. To us the land is given for possession. Now do I agree with everything Nick Vanderland says? No I don't. But this right here. He nailed it. 
it is you go to Nick Vanderland and you go down here to where's it at? Yep. Three year anniversary of the fulfillment of Ezekiel thirty three twenty four. And he he talks about Israel, the UN ambassador of Israel. And I think he's on to something with the Jubilee year too, but so the UN ambassador to Israel was sitting there addressing the UN or the Israel amb ambassador to the UN and he said this exactly word for word in the past couple of years. He quoted that exactly word for word. And it, here it says, they that inhabit the desolate places of the land of Israel. It does not say Israel says this. It says they that inhabit Israel. Therefore say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, As I live, surely they that are in the desolate places shall fall by the swords, and they that are in the open plain shall be given for food to the wild beasts of the field. You'll see in Enoch that beasts are considered are the people. And them that are in the fortified cities, and them that are in the caves, I will slay with pestilence, and I will make the land desert, and the pride of her strength shall perish, and the mountains of Israel shall be made desolate by reason of no man passing through. And they shall know that I am Yahuwah, and I will make their land desert, and it shall be made desolate because of all their abominations which they have wrought. Was Tel Aviv, gave pride capital of the world. And that's his people. That's like saying America is his people. You'll know them by their fruits. And as for thee, son of man, the children of Israel of thy people, are they that speak concerning thee by the walls and in the porches of the house? And they talk one to another, saying, Let us come together, and let us hear the words that proceed from Yahuwah. They approach thee as a people comes together and sit before thee and hear thy words, but they will not do them. For there is falsehood in their mouth, and their heart goes after their pollutions. And thou art to them as the sound of a sweet, well-tuned psaltery, and they will hear thy words, but they will not do them. But whenever it shall come to pass, they will say, Behold, it is come, and they shall know that there is a prophet in the midst of them. Um, yeah, some people twist that out of context, too. You're going to know that a prophet was in your midst. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Ezekiel 36 and thou son of man prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say to the mountains of Israel hear the word of Yahuwah thus saith Yahuwah Elohim because the enemy has said against you what we just read in Ezekiel 33 aha the old waste places are become possession for us who's possessing the waste places the enemy therefore prophesy and say thus saith Yahuwah because you have been dishonored and hated by those round about you that you might be a possession to the remainder of the nations who's possessing Israel and you become a byword and a reproach to the nations therefore you mountains of Israel hear the word of Yahuwah thus saith to Yahuwah the Yahuwah to the mountains and to the hills and to the streams to the valleys to the places that have been made desolate and destroyed and to the cities that have been deserted and become a spoil and trampling to the nations that were left round about they took over the land Therefore, thus saith Yahuwah, verily in the fire of my wrath have I spoken against the rest of the nations and against all Edomia, because they have appropriated my land to themselves for possession with joy. Disregarding the lives of the inhabitants to destroy it by plunder, therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains and to the hills and to the valleys and to the forest, thus saith Yahuwah, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my wrath because you have borne the reproaches of the heathen. Therefore, I lift up my hand against the nations that are round about you. They shall bear the, their reproach. But your grapes and your fruits, so mountains of Israel, shall my people eat. For they are hoping to come. For behold, I am toward you, and I will have respect to you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, even all the house of Israel to the end. And the cities shall be inhabited, and the desolate land shall be built upon and I will multiply men and cattle upon you, and I will cause you to dwell as at the beginning, and will treat you well as in your former times, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. And I will increase men upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall inherit you, and you shall be to them for a possession, and you shall no more be bereaved of them. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, because they said to thee, Thou land devourest men, and hast been bereaved of thy nation. Therefore thou shalt no more devour men, and thou shalt no more bereave thy nation. Saith Yahuwah, and there shall be no more no more be heard against you the reproach of the nations, and you shall no more bear the revilings of the peoples, saith Yahuwah. Shall no more. And so when, he's, when he brings his people in, there's no more reproach of the nations. Guess what? There's still a reproach of the nations. 
And Yehu, the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel dwelt upon their land and defiled it by their way and with their idols and with their uncleannesses. And their way was before me like the uncleanness of a removed woman. So I poured out my wrath upon them and I dispersed them among the nations and utterly scattered them through the countries. I judged them according to their way and according to their sin. And they went in among the nations among which they went and they profaned my holy name while it was said of them. These are the people of Yahuwah, and they came forth out of his land. But I spared them for the sake of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations among whom they went. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus saith Yahuwah, I do not do this, O house of Israel, for your sakes, but because of my holy name, which you profane, have profaned among the nations among whom you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the nations, which you profaned in the midst of them, and their nations shall know that I am Yahuwah, when I am sanctified among you before their eyes. And I will take you out from the nations, and will gather you out of all the lands, and I will bring you into their, your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be purged from all your uncleannesses and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart, and will put a new spirit in you, and I will take away the, the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you, and I will cause you to walk in my ordinances, and to keep my judgments, and do them, and you shall dwell upon the land which I gave to your fathers, and you shall be to me a people, and I will be to you a God, and I will save you from all your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn, and multiply it, and I will not bring famine upon you, and I will multiply the fruit of the trees, and the produce of the field, that you may not bear the reproach of famine among the nations." And you shall remember your evil ways and your practices that were not good. And you shall be hateful in your own sight for your transgressions and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith Yahuwah, as it is known to you. Be you ashamed and confounded for your ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, in the day wherein I shall cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also cause the cities to be inhabited. Are we cleansed from our iniquities? Are we still striving to enter into the narrow gate? And the desolate land shall be cultivated, whereas it was desolate in the eyes of everyone that passed by. And they shall say that desolate land has become like the Garden of Eden, Garden of Delight. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are inhabited. Is it called the Garden of Eden now? No. And the nations, as many as shall have been left round about you, shall know that I, Yahuwah, have built the ruined cities, and planted the wastelands, I, Yahuwah, have spoken and will do it. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, yet for this will I be sought by the house of Israel to establish them. I will multiply them, even men as sheep, as holy sheep, as the sheep of Jerusalem in her feast. Thus shall the desert cities be full of flocks of men, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. Ezekiel 37, And the hand of Yahuwah came upon me, and Yahuwah brought me forth by the Spirit, and set me in the midst of the plain, and it was full of human bones. And he led me round about them every way, and behold, there were very many on the face of the plain, very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, will these bones live? And I said, O Yahuwah, Elohim, thou knowest this. And he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones, and thou shalt say to them, You dry bones, hear the word of Yahuwah. Thus saith Yahuwah to these bones, Behold, I will bring upon you the breath of life, and I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and will spread skin upon you, and put my spirit into you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am Yahuwah. So I prophesied as Yahuwah commanded me, and it came to pass while I was prophesying that, Behold, there was a shaking, and the bones approached each one to his joint. And I looked, and behold, sinews and flesh grew upon them, and skin came upon them above, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, Prophesy to the wind, prophesy, Son of man, say to the wind, Thus saith Yahuwah, come from the four winds. You'll see that in Enoch. Four winds and breath upon these dead, breathe upon these dead men, and let them live. And, uh... I think there's four winds for healing and eight winds for destruction. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath entered into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, a very great congregation. And Yahuwah spoke to me, saying, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. The resurrection? Israel? And they say, Our bones are become dry, our hope has perished, we are quite spent. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will open your tombs, and will bring you up out of the tombs, and will bring you into the, the land of Israel. So in the regathering, he's bringing them up out and bringing them into the land. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah, when I have opened your graves, that I may bring up my people from their graves. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you upon your own land. You shall know that I am Yahuwah, I have spoken and will do it, saith Yahuwah. 
And the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, take for thyself a rod, and ride upon it Judah, and the children of Israel his inheritance, and thou shalt take for thyself another rod, and thou shalt inscribe it for Joseph, the rod of Ephraim, and all the children of Israel that belong to him, and thou shalt join them together for thyself, so as that they should bind themselves into one stick, and they shall be in thine hand. And it shall come to pass, when the children of thy people shall say to thee, Wilt thou not tell us what thou meanest by these things? Then shalt thou say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will take the tribe of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel that belong to him, the northern kingdom, and I will add them to the tribe of Judah, and they shall become one rod in the hand of Judah. And it, the rods on which thou didst write shall be in thine hand in their presence, and thou shalt say to them, Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I will take the whole house of Israel out of the midst of the nations. See, I will, among whom they have gone, and I will gather them from all that are round about them, and I will bring them into the land of Israel. And I will make them a nation in my land, even on the mountains of Israel, and they shall have one prince, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided any more at all into two kingdoms, that they may no more defile themselves with their idols, and I will deliver them from all their transgressions, whereby they have sinned, and I will cleanse them, and will cleanse them, and they shall be to me a people, and I, Yahuwah, will be to them a God. And my servant David shall be a prince in the midst of them, and there shall be one shepherd of them all, for they shall walk in mine ordinances and keep my judgments and do them. So when they enter, they come back in the land, they're going to keep them. And they shall dwell in their land, which I have given to my servant Jacob, where their fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell upon it. And David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish my sanctuary in the midst of them forever, and my tabernacle shall be among them, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be my people, and the nations shall know that I am Yahuwah that sanctifies them when my sanctuary is in the midst of them forever. And so... I don't think I'll go into 38 and 39 uh, Psalms. Hit these up here. Psalm 95. It's 96 in the regular Bibles. When the house was built after the captivity, a song by David. Sing to Yahuwah a new song. Sing to Yahuwah all the earth. Is that in Revelation here? New song. New song. Revelation 14, 3. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. 144,000 has sealed the 12 tribes of Israel. It says 12 tribes of Israel. Is the word lying or not? Uh, let's see, Revelation 14, sealed, oh, tribes, Revelation 7, sealed of the 12 tribes of Israel. Sing to Yahuwah, bless his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day, pro publish his glory among the Gentiles, his wonderful works among all people. For Yahuwah is great and greatly to be praised. He is terrible above all gods, for all the gods of the heathen are devils. But Yahuwah made the heavens, thanksgiving and beauty are before him, holiness and majesty are in his sanctuary. Bring to Yahuwah, you families of the Gentiles, bring to Yahuwah glory and honor, bring to Yahuwah glory becoming his name, take offerings and go into his courts. Worship Yahuwah in his holy court. Let all the earth tremble before him. Say among the heathen, Yahuwah reigns, for he has established the world so that it shall not be moved. It's not a spinning ball. He shall judge the people in righteousness. He's going to judge people by his righteousness. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth exalt. Let the sea be moved in the fullness of it. The plains shall rejoice and all things there in them. Then shall all the trees of the wood exalt before the presence of Yahuwah, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world in righteousness and the people with his truth. Um. Yep, for Yahuwah will not cast off his people. This is the one right before. Yep. 
Uh, let's see. For David, when his land is established, Yahuwah reigns, let the earth exult, let many islands rejoice. Cloud and darkness are round about him, righteousness and judgment are the establishment of his throne. Fire shall go from before him and burn up his enemies round about. His lightnings appeared to the world, the earth saw and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of Yahuwah, at the presence of Yahuwah the whole earth. The heavens have declared his righteousness, and all the people have seen his glory. Let all that worship graven images be ashamed, who boast of their idols. Worship him, all ye angels. Zion heard and rejoiced, and the daughters of Judea exalted because of thy judgments. O Yahuwah, for thou art Yahuwah most high over all the earth. Thou art greatly exalted above all gods. Ye that love Yahuwah hate evil. Yahuwah preserves the soul of, souls of his saints. He shall deliver them from the hand of sinners. Light has sprung up for the righteous, and gladness for the upright of heart. Upright in heart, rejoice in Yahuwah, you righteous, and give thanks for a remembrance of his holiness. Sing to Yahuwah a new song, for Yahuwah has wrought wonderful works. His right hand and his holy arm have wrought salvation for him. Yahuwah has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of, na of the nations. He has remembered his mercy to Jacob and his truth to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to Yahuwah, all the earth, sing and exult, sing psalms, sing to Yahuwah with a harp, with a harp, and with the voice of a psalm, with trumpets of metal, and the sound of a trumpet of horn, make a joyful noise to Yahuwah before the king. Let Yahuwah be moved in the fullness of it, the world, and they that dwell in it. The rivers shall clap their hands together, the mountains shall exult, for he has come to judge the earth. He shall judge the world in righteousness, and the nations in uprightness. Yahuwah reigns, let the people ra peoples rage. It is he that sits upon the cherubs. Let the earth be moved. Yahuwah is great in Zion and is high over all the people. Let them give thanks to thy great name, for it is terrible and holy. For, Yahu for the king's honor loves judgment. Thou hast prepared equity. Thou hast wrought judgment and justice in Jacob. Exalt ye, Yahuwah our Elohim, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among them that call upon his name. They called upon Yahuwah, and he heard them. He spoke to them in a pillar of a cloud. They kept his testimonies and the ordinances which he gave them. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, thou heardest them. O Yahuwah, thou became propitious to them. Thou dost, though thou dost take vengeance on all their devices, exalt ye, Yahuwah, our Elohim, and worship at his holy mountain. For Yahuwah, our Elohim, is holy. Make a joyful noise to Yahuwah, all the earth. Serve Yahuwah with gladness. Come before his presence with exaltation. Know that Yahuwah, he is Elohim. He made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his court with courts with hymns. Give thanks to him. Praise his name for Yahuwah is good. His mercy is forever and his truth endures to generation and generation. His law. Um... Uh, let's see, mine, I should be. Yeah, it kind of goes together. I think it's up to Psalm 104 that goes together. So we go to Habakkuk 2. Have a cook. That's M. Beckham. Is it two? Yeah. Uh, I will stand upon my watch and mount upon the rock and watch to see what he will say by me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And you who answered me said, Write the vision and that plainly on the tablet that he that reads it may run for the vision is yet for a time and it shall shoot forth at the end. And not in vain, though he should tarry, wait for him, for he will surely come and will not tarry. If he should draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him, but the just shall live by faith. But the arrogant man, the scorner, the boastful man shall not finish anything. Who has enlarged his desire as the grave, and like death he is never satisfied. He will gather to himself all the nations, and will receive to himself all the peoples. Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a proverb to tell against him? And they shall say, Woe to him that multiplies to himself the possessions which are not his, how long and who heavily loads his yoke? For suddenly thou shalt arise 
up those that bite him, and they that plot against thee shall awake, and thou shalt be a plunder to them, because thou hast spoiled many nations. All the nations that are left shall spoil thee, because of the blood of men, and the sins of the land and city, and of all them that dwell in it. Woe to him that covets an evil covetousness to his house, that he may sit his nest on high, that he may de be delivered from the power of evils. Thou hast devised shame to thy house, thou hast utterly destroyed many nations, thy and thy soul hast sinned. For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beetle out of the timber shall speak. Woe to, him, woe to him that builds a city with blood, and establishes a city by unrighteousness. Are not these things of Yehu Almighty? Surely many people have been exhausted in the fire, and many nations have fainted. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahuwah. It shall cover them as water. Woe to him that gives his neighbor to drink the thick leaves of wine, and intoxicates him that he may look up upon their secret parts. Drink thou also thy fill of disgrace instead of glory. Shake, O heart, and quake. The cup of the right hand of Yahuwah has come round upon thee, and dishonor has gathered upon thy glory. For the ungodliness of Lebanon shall cover thee, and distress because of wild beasts shall dismay thee, because of the blood of men, and the sins of the land and city, and all them that dwell in there. In it, what profits it the graven image that they have graven it? One has made it a, a molten work, a false image, for the maker who has trusted in his work to make dumb idols. Woe to him that says to wood, awake, arise, and to the stone be thou exalted. Where is it? An, it is an image, and this is a casting of gold and silver, and there is no breath in it. But Yahuwah is in his holy temple. Let er all earth fear before him. Um, yeah, you continue reading there. That goes with it. Uh, last part. So I'm going to go to Zephaniah 2. For seek you, let's see, Zephaniah 2. Be ye gathered and closely joined together, O unchastened nation, before you become as the flower that passes away, before the anger of Yahuwah has come upon you, before the day of the wrath of Yahuwah come upon you. Seek you all the Yahuwah, all ye meek of the earth, and do judgment and seek justice and answer accordingly, that you may be hid in the day of the wrath of Yahuwah. He's telling you what to do, telling us what to do. For Gaza shall be utterly spoiled, and Ascalon shall be destroyed, and Azotus shall be cast forth at noonday, and Acheron shall be rooted up. Woe to them that dwell on the border of the sea, neighbors of the Cretans. The word of Yahuwah is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines, where it's modern-day Israel at. Canaan. It's called Canaan because he, took, he stole the land. And I will destroy you out of your dwelling place, and Crete shall be a pasture of flocks and a fold of sheep, and the sea coast shall be for the, rem for the remnant of the house of Judah, shall be they shall pasture upon them in the houses of Ascalon they shall rest in the evening because of the children of Judah for Yahuwah their Elohim has visited them he will turn away their captivity he will turn away their captivity I have heard the revilings of Moab and the insults of the children of Ammon wherewith they have reviled my people and magnified themselves against my coast they have magnified themselves Therefore, as I live, saith Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, Moab shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, and Damascus shall be left as a heap of the threshing floor and desolate forever, and the remnant of my people shall plunder them, and the remnant of my nation shall inherit them. This is their punishment in return for their haughtiness, because they have reproached and magnified themselves against Yahuwah Almighty. Yahuwah shall appear against them, shall appear shall utterly destroy the gods of the nations of the earth, and they, sh they shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the islands of the nations. All right. So you can go. Well, you can see here. Um, Yea, the Ethiopians also are slain by the sword. He shall stretch forth his hand against the north and destroy the Assyrian and make Nineveh a dry wilderness, even as a desert, and flocks and all the wild beasts of the land, and the chameleons shall feed in midst thereof, and hedgehogs shall lodge in the ceilings thereof, and wild beasts shall cry in the breaches thereof, and ravens in her porches, whereas, whereas her loftiness was as a cedar. This is the scornful city that dwells securely. That says in her heart, I am, and there is no longer any to be after me. How she has become desolate, a habitation of wild beasts. Everyone that passes through her shall hiss and shake his hands. Um, I'll refer you to this video. I'm not going to go through all that. It'll take, I mean, that'd, that'd be a whole other video. Adam did a really good job with this. Praise Yah. 
just go go to not that parable of the vineyard. Let's see where's that. I'll just go to this page. No, not wrong one. Just go here. He nails it. Mystery Babylon. Parable of the Vineyard. He nails it. Mystery Babylon. Jerusalem. And you've got... Most people say Rome's the harlot. Well, the harlot rides the beast. Rome's the beast. The harlot, Rome can't ride herself. So, Zechariah 12 finish with this the burden of the word of Yahuwah for Israel saith Yahuwah that stretches out the sky and lays the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him behold I'll make Jerusalem as trembling doorpost to all nations round about and in Judea there shall be a, a siege against Jerusalem um, Steve from Torah family makes a, a big connection with Ezekiel 4 and the siege against Jerusalem that possibly ties into this and it shall come to pass in that day that I will make Jerusalem a trodden stone to all the nations. Everyone that tramples on it shall utterly mock at it, and all the nations of the earth shall be gathered together against it. In that day, saith you, who Almighty, I will smite every horse with amazement, and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite all the horses of the nations with blindness. And the captains of thousands of Judah shall say in their hearts, We shall find for ourselves the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Um... And Yahuwah Almighty, their Elohim, in that day I will make, we shall find for ourselves. In that day I will make the captives of thousands of Judah as a firebrand among wood, and as a torch of fire and stubble, and they shall devour on the right hand and the left all nations round about. And then Jerusalem shall dwell again by herself, even in Jerusalem. And Yahuwah shall save the tabernacles of Judah at the beginning, after this, that the boast of the house of David and the pride of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not magnify themselves against Judah, the pride of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Does it say Israel? No, it says the inhabitants of Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in that day that Yahuwah shall defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the weak among them in that day shall be as David, that's after destruction, and the house of David as the house of God. So that's, it's, it's together, but you got to separate it. He's going to destroy, and then he's going to defend. He's going to bring them into the land, then he's going to defend them. A uh, couple things you can look at. I mean, the signs are there. I've went over this a little bit in videos. You can see, you know, there's the flag. You can see that, I mean, Freemason, Kabbalah, you know, all that stuff. There's the star. It's there. Acts 7.43, you took up the tabernacle of Molech, star of your god Remphan, figures which you made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So, the, I mean, there's tons of other evidence. You go through the Book of Jubilees, you can see where the tribes were separated. Check out the God culture. They're really good at geography. I don't agree with everything they say, but their geography is in their the old maps they use is, they nail it. So you can see where the people went and all that stuff. Um, Book of Jubilees tells you the Ashkenazi or Ashkenazi, Jews come from the Russian steppes that it don't it don't it just don't go together. Ashkenazi descended from Japheth. Japheth. Let's see. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi. Yeah. I don't know if I can spell it right. Nope. Ash Nazi uh, 
Ash can not, <laughs> I can't even spell it. Ash. Okay, let's see. Kanazi. I can't find it. J Beth. Oh. Ah, uh, see. Uh, Sons of Japheth. Genesis ten two. Yeah, you see the Kittim, the Romans descended from Japheth. Um. Tubal Meshach. Yeah, see Ashkenaz. Descendant of Gomer, descendant of Japheth. And they inherited the northern cold lands in the Book of Jubilees. That's that's not Shemites, Abraham. They inherited the middle. Ham inherited the south, the hot. It it all lines up. Um That's all I got. So I mean there's there's a lot more to go with it, but you know. Hopefully that was a blessing and helpful to, to y'all. And I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but it's it's a big subject and it's not something that's, yeah. There's a reason it's an end times deception and uh, the false state of Israel was created by the UN as an end times deception. Just like the globe was an end times deception. It's all deception for a reason. So people don't know the Bible and what's going on. Um, if you look at, yeah, here's a couple of other things you can look at. Now, we don't agree on everything, but if you look at this, go to Many Fishers on YouTube. Look here, Mount Hermon, the Fallen Angels, the Hoover Dam, and also... I'm just trying to give y'all some information so you'll be prepared, you know. Just trying to help. Uh, you can go to Rich from Boston on BitChute and Rich from Boston on Odyssey. Um, go to, nope, that's wrong. Let's see if I can find it here. Make sure I'm pointing you to the right right stuff here uh, nope wrong one all right so let's just go to bit shoot and search Richie from Boston uh, he don't even come up <laughs> Man, they've got him banned everywhere. He's on there. Huh. Wow. Let's see. Yep. Uh, so he just released another video. I can pull it up right quick. That's the way the video is going long. I knew it was going to be. It's a big, big subject. There's a lot of deception involved. All right. Let's see if I can just pull this page up here. Uh. Okay, okay, I typed it in wrong. Richie, it's no T in it. Bingo. All right, this is it right here. Richie from Boston. He's got a lot of good information on here. Um. So, all right.